Judge, watch this. Too many Americans think that the First Amendment says separation of church and state. Guess what people think the First Amendment says? The courts of the media will often refer to a ruling as being in violation of the separation of church and state. A recent national poll showed that 69% of Americans believe the First Amendment says separation of church and state. Here's what it says. The First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press and the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a, a, redre a redress of grievances. So where did separation of church and state come from? Here it is. And this is also on his, this is on his tombstone. He has a monument there and it's on it. All right, here it goes. Uh, you go back to a letter written by Thomas Jefferson. He wrote it in 1802. I wrote it back in 1802. <clears throat> in October 1801, the Danbury Baptist Association of Connecticut wrote to President Jefferson, and in their letter, they voiced some concerns about religious freedom. So on January 1st, 1802, Jefferson wrote a letter to them in which he added the phrase separation of church and state. When you read the full letter, you'll understand that Jefferson is simply under, underscoring the First Amendment as a guardian of the people's religious freedom from government interference. And here's part of the letter. I contemplate with sovereign reverence that the act of the whole American people which declared that their legislative legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. What the people are trying to do is they're trying to keep God out of the government. And what he was trying to do was keep the government, or keep the church out of the government. And what he was trying to do was keep the government out of church. There's a big difference. Amen? That's a big difference. Yeah. And so what he was saying is, he was even telling the clergy, y'all run for office. We need you up here. Okay? So it's really kind of, it's kind of bad that they would use that. So the First Amendment uses a, a uh, Jefferson said because the First Amendment then uses the metaphor, the wall, to separate the government from interfering with religious practice. So the First Amendment puts restriction only on the government, not the people. But that's not what we hear. I mean, they'll take it and run with it. I was watching some of the some of the confirmation today, and the Senate confirmations, and I was quite sick of my stomach. I wanted to go, I had to go to the bathroom and throw up a couple times after watching it. And I was thinking when the Obama's people got up there, y'all were, were busy trying to get them on in, you know, and and because he had he had liberals and butterfly chasers and tree huggers, and they were all get them on in, get them on in. And now they got somebody that'll stand for something, and if somebody will stand for something, they don't want them in there. And so so uh, uh, just pray because as at this point, I believe these guys, I believe they're all getting confirmed. But if they don't, then we want the right one in, in the spot anyway. But I've never seen a cabinet quite like this. Before the cabinet, just kind of were, the last cabinet was like a puppet. Okay? And this cabinet's not a puppet. He ain't got a bunch of puppets. I haven't watched. Have you ever seen George, George C. Scott play Pat? Movie Pat? If you have never seen that movie Pat, you need to watch it because it is an awesome movie. And, and, uh, let your <laughs> General Patton, General Patton's army was, I mean, they, they, they could take care of business. All right. So again, remember, it's not the separation of church, it's not the separation of God and state, it's the separation of church and state keeping the church, the government out of church. But even right now, there's places in their states that are looking at pastor's outlines in the United States of America. Taking away their church, I mean their tax, tax exempt status, and some are even being accused of hate crimes. Okay, because they're not politically correct. This is going on in the United States of America, not Russia, not Iraq, the United States of America. So, now getting through with all that, so again, so Benjamin Franklin told Jefferson. Matter of fact, all the forefathers, if you read all the forefathers' writings, you'll see where they talk continuously about God and how we need God's help. And, and I've noticed that when they teach American history now, they kind of leave all this stuff out. They just kind of breeze through some of this stuff to the point where people, some of the youngest don't even know what they're talking about. I can ask, I've asked some of my grand youngers, or asked some people who've been in school for four or five years, tell me about Thomas Jefferson and uh, who's that? Well, talk about George Washington. You know, 
and, and, and they don't talk about this stuff that you see here. So again, so, so deism, let's get back to this. Deism, God wound the world like a clock. Now, now, I want you to see something here. And if you got, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Intersect. E-I-N-T-E-R-S-E-C-T. Intersect.